We are now joined via Zoom by San Luis Obispo County Public Health Director Dr. Penny Bornstein to share an update on the COVID situation in San Luis Obispo. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Bornstein. Let's start by talking about the case numbers in Slow County. Where do they stand now and do you feel like they are still on the rise at this point? Yeah, so um, our numbers are still quite high and um, while they may be leveling off a little bit, um, nothing to write home about at this point. We're still seeing five, 600 cases a day. And if I recall that that's higher than at any point during the pandemic, is that correct? It, it, it equals some of our highest days ever in the past. Okay. And we have heard that the hospitalizations and the deaths generally lag by a few weeks behind the uh, spike in, in the case counts. This Omicron variant appeared to really first arrive in our area in, in late December. Have you seen that correlation regarding the hospitalizations and deaths? Um, yeah, absolutely. We are seeing high hospitalization rates. We're not sure if they've leveled off at this point, um, but they have come about at least a couple of weeks after we saw our cases start to rise. We are seeing numbers that are almost as high as our highest levels. And this is with a disease that everyone understands is less severe than previous variants like the Delta variant. So um, we're also beginning to see deaths with this Omicron uh, variant, and we have unfortunately a lot more coming. We have what we call our pending deaths, which means um, deaths that the attending physician indicated is a death due to COVID, but the death certificate has not been finalized, so we haven't made those numbers public yet. Um, but we can tell the public that we anticipate seeing more deaths um, being reported publicly in the coming days and weeks. Mm. And how much of this is due to the Omicron variant? As you do your testing, uh, is that the dominant variant now in Slow County? Yeah, we have the ability at our local public health lab to test all of our positive specimens for what strain they are. And we're seeing upwards of 90% of those are due to the Omicron variant. So that is in fact the dominant strain. And you did say that it does appear to be uh, less uh, severe than, than the Delta. You're comfortable saying that now at this point? Yeah, I think everyone, um, all the data shows that, all the experts who've been watching this um, would agree that for the vast majority of people who get infected with Omicron, um, they're likely to have a less serious um, disease case than they might have with other variants. The problem with the Omicron variant, of course, is that so many people are getting it. It is so infectious. It rivals anything we've seen with our most infectious diseases like measles. Um, so with so many people getting the disease, even if you have a small percentage that are developing severe disease in need of hospitalization or intensive care, um, we're still seeing numbers that rival some of our earlier surges. Talk to us about testing here for COVID. It's been well documented. It's difficult to get the uh, rapid tests at home. I know that the county it has some solutions. What, what do you tell people who need to get a COVID test? Yeah, we, we understand that there's a fair bit of frustration. We're telling people to get tested at various points in time to get out of isolation. If they've been um, in close contact with someone who's infected, if they have symptoms, um, they, they should go get tested. Um, and antigen testing, the rapid tests, um, is preferred in some of those situations. Um, so we understand the frustration of the demand is outstripping the capacity. One, one good point yesterday um, started to make available through the U.S. Postal Service, the, the federal supply direct ship to homes. So that's going to be a partial answer for many families. Um, we also are starting to get more of those rapid tests into our hands. We're going to make them available through clinics, through um, especially places of high need. Um, congregate care settings, um, the schools do have a, a lot of antigen tests available. So the, the, the supply chain is beginning to open up, but um, I just would ask for people to be patient and try their best in various settings through clinics, through urgent cares, through pharmacies to try to get um, testing. Okay, certainly a challenging time during the pandemic as we reach about the two year mark right now. Dr. Bornstein, thank you very much for bringing us the latest information. Thank you.